Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Superman. This is episode 26, and today we potentially have some huge news to talk about. Some more set photos have been revealed, and if fans are right, then everything we initially thought about this movie will be flipped on its head. So thanks to Brian Lumley, we have some new set photos from the Superman set, and it looks like it could potentially be our real location for Metropolis. So our first image is of the Daily Planet logo. Now I really like this design, but it was not what I was expecting at all. This has a very old fashioned kind of vibe to it, and I like it. And it looks like the logo is on a glass door to a bookshop. And I don't know whether or not this is the door to the Daily Planet, or to a bookstore that sells the Daily Planet newspaper. Personally, I think this is just a bookshop promoting the Daily Planet newspaper, as it could be the most popular item the store sells, and the reasoning for the old-fashioned design will be explained a bit later on in the episode. But moving on to our second image, we have a shop with some very interesting names on the outside of it. Specifically, Hi-Fi Stereos, which is not a very modern piece of technology, so for it to be labelled on the outside of the shop is kind of surprising. So these two photos have got fans theorizing about when the movie actually takes place. The Daily Planet logo could just be a design choice, and the store could just be a retro tech shop. But many fans are asking the question, is Superman set in the 70s? And I never actually thought about that until now. I always just assumed the movie would be in the modern day like every other superhero film tends to be. But maybe Gunn is taking a different approach approach and going back in time to tell Superman's story, and I don't really know how to feel about that. It would be cool to have the movie set in a different time, but I feel going all the way back to the 70s for the DCU would be a bad decision going forward. I think it would just feel strange for a modern audience, and having to keep track of all the real world past events for the DCU would probably be messy. But Real Anarchy pointed out that this photo on the store is a more modern piece of technology, so being set in the 70s is unlikely. But other fans are theorizing that maybe the city has a retro-futuristic style, and the movie is timeless, as in, it doesn't have a specific time it is set in, and isn't like our real world. Now, I love this idea. If we can have a metropolis that looks like this, or close to this, then I will love it. And this is what James Gunn said on a podcast earlier this year. There's an aesthetic that you want to, you know, put against everything. Yeah. And especially with my movies, with, you know, with, with how we're doing Superman, we're creating a, an aesthetic that hasn't you know existed before and i don't know about you but to me that sounds like gunn has a very unique plan for the aesthetic of his superman movie and metropolis having this retro futuristic vibe to it could definitely be that and i think these set photos could hint towards that and like i said i would really like this to be the case gunn needs to carve his own identity into this film and make it feel different yet classic and i think having a metropolis that has its own very unique and recognizable look to it would help that. Gotham has notoriously been the city that has its own iconic look to it, that everyone can recognize right away. Whereas Metropolis has always just looked like a regular city, and that's great for realism, where the movie is set in a modern and realistic world, but if your mindset when making a DC universe is to not lean as much into realism, then I think having a Metropolis that has a really unique vibe to it that no real city has, is a really, really great idea. And I also think it complements other parts of the DCU as well, such as the Peacemaker costume or Superman wearing trunks. I've been very vocal when it comes to Superman wearing trunks, and I think it looks stupid, and I can't really take a modern day Superman seriously with them on. The reason why I'm fine with Christopher Reeve wearing the trunks is because of the time it was set in. Back then, it was more normal and more campy, whereas now the world has changed and so have movies. But in the DCU, if Metropolis as a whole incorporates modern designs and retro designs, then Superman doing the same completely makes sense. And if you look at the Superman suit, it definitely has its own retro-futuristic look to it. You have the modernized material and more unique emblem, but the trunks of the suit are definitely more retro. And this will mean Superman will fit in enough with the look of the city for it not to look laughable. I've always imagined a modern-day Superman wearing trunks being set 
set in the metropolis from Man of Steel, and that just looks so silly to me. You have this serious and realistic world with a serious and realistic Superman, but he's wearing a bright red diaper on the outside of his costume. For me, that just doesn't work. The tones contradict one another way too much. But if we take this retro futuristic metropolis and place David Corrensweat's Superman into it, I think the trunks and suits overall feel like they're supposed to be there. And remember, this is all just speculation right now. We could find out that we're all just overthinking and actually the designs have nothing to do with a retro futuristic look to Metropolis, and actually it's just a design choice for two shops. But if our theory is true, then I'm really looking forward to this aspect of the movie. These set photos could actually be for a flashback scene to possibly the origin of the Daily Planet, or maybe just a bookstore that sells the Daily Planet newspaper in it, and this could actually be a retro technology store. Who knows, but it is fun to theorise, and I do hope Metropolis will have the retro futuristic aesthetic, because it will make this movie feel very unique. Now, one thing that will make this movie feel very unique is the inclusion of crypto, and whilst we don't have a confirmation of that, DCU Updates has noticed that in one of the set photos, the street number is 712. And in the Superman art department, they had a comic book on the wall of Superman Volume 712, where Crypto was on the front. So, is this just a nice little easter egg, or is it teasing at Crypto appearing in this movie, or in the DCU later? Well, based on the comics they are following, the Supergirl movie has Crypto in it, so we should expect him making an appearance in that movie. And before today's video, I would have been hesitant of him appearing at all, as it would feel too silly for a real world movie. But if the DCU is being created in the way I think it is, then I think this will work just fine. And I think that is a big part of the growing pains that the DCU will have. Many pieces of news that have come out so far are not things we expected, and that's because we are judging it based on what was before it. And what we need to remember is that Gunn looks to be creating something new and fresh that clearly the DCEU was unable to create, which is why he has rebooted the universe. Now whether or not that lands with the audience will only be known in time. But I I think I myself need to stop trying to judge the DCU on how I saw the DCEU, because these will be very different to one another. Snyder went for a more grounded and realistic approach, which I absolutely love, but that's not the only way to make DC movies. I think realism needs to always be there, but the amount of realism that exists can vary. For the early DCEU, the mentality from those filmmakers were that they were trying to make it feel as realistic as possible. But with the DCU, it looks like Gunn will have more flexibility with that and use more fantasy elements, and I think it would be unfair and ironic ironically unrealistic for us to judge Gunn with the expectation of it being made similarly to the early DCEU. So I need to remind myself when new information comes out to not expect these things to be like the DCEU, which is what I'm going to do with this potential news of Metropolis being a retro futuristic city. Now to end this episode we have one extra piece of news. It has been confirmed that some characters from Creature Commandos which will be releasing this December, will appear in Superman next year. Now initially when I heard this, I thought that's a bad idea as the movie is already stacked with characters. But then I realised that maybe what this actually means is that some characters that we already know will appear in Superman will actually appear in Creature Commandos 2, but we just haven't been told that yet. So in reality, characters maybe like the Engineer may appear in Creature Commandos, but it just hasn't been announced yet. At least I hope that is the case, because Superman has a lot of characters in it already, but I guess time will tell. But that is all for today's episode of The Road to Superman. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. I hope to see you here again soon, so until then, have a great day. Bye!